Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Boozer. I'm with CGC HQ, and I am so happy to welcome you to our very first webinar of 2020. And it's uh, it's going to be a good one. We had uh, part one of this back in July, uh, Citrix on Nutanix, and it does say 2019 update. Um, and I know it's 2020, <laughs> um, but we did have to postpone this uh, webinar from December. So, um, but uh, but we're all rocking and rolling now and ready to go. Um, but I'm looking forward to this. There were a lot of questions from that part one webinar. I don't even think we intended it to start out as a multi-part series, but there were so many good questions that came out of that first one that um, Jari and uh, took all that and and came up with a, a second part. So. So I'm excited to dig into that, but before I hand things over to him, I just want to go over a couple of housekeeping details with you guys. Um, first of all, we are recording today's presentation and you will receive a link to the recording. It will also be available on mycugc.org. So you'll get an email from GoToWebinar tomorrow with a link to the recording. And like I said, it'll be available at any time on our website. Also, we'd like you to submit your questions at any time during the presentation. We'll try to take some during and some after. It just kind of depends on how the flow goes. So type those in as you have them, and we'll definitely try to get to as many questions as we can today. And finally, at the end of the webinar, I am going to put a link in the chat uh, to a survey, and it's quick, it's anonymous, and we just really like to get your feedback on all these webinars. It really helps us um, you know, know how we're doing and plan future content. Um, one other quick note for you, for anyone who is in the great state of Texas or interested in traveling to Texas, you don't have to live there. Um, our first XL event of 2020 is coming up in February. It's on February 26th. And I am going to put a link in the chat window for you right now. If you're interested, you can get more details, uh, find out about our speakers, uh, who all is speaking, what they're gonna be talking about. These are day-long events, they're free, and um, they're just great opportunities to learn and network and connect with other CUGC members. And like I said, you don't even have to be in the Houston area. We do have um, a hotel block, so if you can travel to Houston, if that's feasible for you, we'd love to have you. All right, I am going to introduce who's on our call with us today. We have James Rankin. He is a member of our UK CUGC Group Steering Committee, and he's also a Citrix CTP. He's probably got several other titles I don't have on here. Um, James is going to be taking a look at the questions today as you type those in and keeping an eye on those. And um, James, would you like to say hello? Yes, I would. Um... If you can hear any background noise, my children have already been warned to stop shouting and they've just started again. So if someone sounds like they're being murdered in the background, they're not. They're just playing a game of some sorts. But yes, I am very glad to be here on this webinar and learning about new things again. And obviously, we've got Jarian doing the presentation, who is, um, we all, within the CTP program, we all have our kind of specialties, apart from Jarian, who seems to know absolutely everything. So he's always a great guy to listen to and share lots of knowledge with you so i am very much looking forward to it thanks james and as you mentioned we have jarian gibson on with us today he is a senior solutions architect with nutanix and a ctp and he's also one of the leaders of our kansas city cgc group all right that is all that i have i'm ready to hand things over to you jarian if you are ready ready to go ready to go all right here comes the screen all right. All right, so let me show. Oops. Can everyone see my screen okay? Looks good. Yes. Okay, so uh, thanks for having me back. Um, what I did from the first webinar was, was, was kind of a grand overview of Citrix on Nutanix. Um, we talked about um, all the integration I believe um, we hit on a little bit of image management. Um, we touched on a little bit of the cloud. Um, 
services that we can offer. What is going on here? One second. Okay. Um, we touched a little bit. Hey, James. Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, it sounds like your audio is cutting in and out. Yeah, I've got a, uh, one of the audience mentioned as well. The audio seems to be a bit in and out. James, can you hear me okay now? I can hear you, Jarian, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now, sorry about that. For some reason, my microphone tripped for some reason, but I think I'm good to go. So anyways, um, sorry about that uh, hiccup with the audio there. Um, what I was saying is, so the initial webinar was kind of like a Fast and Furious, Civic on Nutanix. We kind of touched on a wide breadth of everything. So um, based on the questions we got during that webinar and some of the feedback and just some things I kind of want to go in deeper, we're going to focus more on image management. Um, mainly on provisioning, um, MCS, PVS, full clones, app layering. Uh, we'll talk about multi-site DR. Um, I touched a little bit last time on on um, uh, Nutanix clusters on AWS and also our Xyleap with Citrix. Um, and this time I am back with uh, some uh, demos um, as well. So we'll go through that um, here in the webinar today. So we talked about the agenda here. So uh, introduction, um, image management over you. Uh, I'm not going to go deep into all the plugins. I'm just going to talk about a couple things real quick um, that kind of differ differentiate um, Nutanix AHV on-prem, Nutanix clusters, and Nutanix XI um, as it comes to Citrix. Um, we'll talk about image management um, as far as MCS, PVS, um, full clones, app layering, uh, multi-cluster protection domains, that kind of stuff. Um, no PVS MCS debate, you know, just going to talk about them both. We support them both fully. Um, we're going to get into cloud disaster recovery, um, and then also talk uh, additional resources and questions. Um, we will take uh, questions during the webinar, um, so just feel free to ramp those up. Uh, and thank you for Stephanie for having me, um, and also to James for uh, moderating and helping out with the webinar. Um, so if you don't know me, my name is Jarian Gibson. Uh, I'm a senior solutions architect um, in EUC engineering at Nutanix. Um, I do a lot with Citrix on Nutanix. So when you see things like when we do, any kind of enhancements we do with EUC for Citrix, the best practices guides, the the blueprints, the reference architectures, um, you know, that kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff I do, testing um, our solutions, improving our solutions, um, you know, talking with the community and getting the feedback from there as well. Um, my website should be coming back here pretty soon. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at, at Jarian Gibson. Um, and then I am a CTP and also a local leader of the, the Citrix user group here in Kansas City. Um, so hopefully you guys, all different areas, get out and support your local user group, attend the XLs, a great way to network and to, to have conversations. Um, so with that being said, um, I'm going to look at a couple of questions here first. And um, links for part one should be in the chat window. So if you haven't more questions, so I don't know whether you just cut out there briefly, Jarian, when you were introducing the poll there. But um, for everyone, um, if it did cut out, uh, Jarian is obviously asking, "Are you running AHV?" And please select the answer. So it looks like we've got some good numbers there. So I'll give it another couple seconds here and then close the poll.
So we're about a 77% voted. Um, and so I think it's a good time to close the poll here after a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. And it looks like it said, it's a, almost an even split, 47% uh, yes and 53% no. So we have a good split here. Um, some things will pertain to other hypervisors, but a lot of the content I talk about today will be AHV focused because that's where we're seeing a lot of traction for our customers on Citrix. Um, so just to, to put that out, out there up front. So um, one thing I want to note is just an update here. Um, a couple of things have changed with our plugin. Um, one of the new things is it's actually on the later versions. Um, it's as been renamed um, to just for Zen Desktop, for Citrix Zen Desktop, before it said 7.9 and above. So the later versions have changed that uh, that verbiage of the plugin. Um, I'm still working to get um, it updated for virtual apps and desktops naming um, and to go that way. Uh, one thing though to note for the update for this is the main thing is that for integration with AHV, you're gonna need the plugin installed. Um, you won't see the Nutanix AHV dropdown. Um, are you guys seeing the poll still or are you using my slide deck? I can see your slide deck, Jarian, but okay, um, so I got something in the poll that said that they don't they're seeing the, the slide change from the poll. You know, people saying slide on there. So okay, I think making sure based on one person then. So yeah, anyways, to, to, okay. So anyways, to see the Nutanix HP drop down to do power management, to do MCS, all that kind of stuff, you need to have the plugin installed. And I'll talk about where and why in a little bit, but just a, a note that two five one zero was released on twelve twelve nineteen, so just before Christmas. Um, the main guidance here is always check to see about releases. You can sign up for plugin alerts in the portal. Um, the main thing with releases is that we do bug fixes. We do enhancements. Um, as API changes with Citrix or different versions, um, we update it as well. So make sure you're always using the latest and greatest plugin um, from Citrix. Um, the next thing, too, is that you notice over the past couple installers, um, it's a combined plugin installer. So MCS AHV plugin the Cloud Connector plugin, the PVS plugin. Um, but one thing that's coming soon um, that I've been working on and testing and that we're getting ready to release is that we're gonna have a fourth option in the plugin. So as I talk about um, the Nutanix Xi, um, there's gonna be a fourth option in the plugin um, to use Nutanix Xi. And so you'll see the top plugin for, for MCS AHV changed to PE, which is Prism Element. So the on-prem plugin, we'll talk the prism elements. And the main difference between the on-prem plugin and the Xi plugin is the API interface. So the Xi MCS plugin is going to talk to um, P Prism Central PC slash Xi overlay APIs um, to be able to use in our, cli our Xi cloud services customers. So um, we're in the final stages of testing that. So look for that to come soon if anyone is using our um, Nutanix Xi cloud services for Citrix. Um, and then let's talk about image management integration. Um, I said before, there's three things we're going to talk about today. Um, and just so you guys kind of see where the integration points are today is that Nutanix AHV, I'll refer to as your on-prem um, in your data center on your hardware. That's uh, the on-prem plugin. Um, from today's standpoint, that's all Prism element based. Um, and but you're going to have the full, you know, capabilities to do virtual apps and desktops on-prem. Um, to use the cloud connectors, if you're using Citrix Cloud, um, to be able to use uh, provisioning services or provisioning as the new name is um, for that, and also use app layering connectors, they all interface with Prism Element. Um, the tenants clusters, um, which we announced here at our last two dot next, and we've seen some dem demos of that as well. Um, the tenants clusters from an API integration standpoint is going to be the exact same as Nutanix AHV. Um, basically, it's taking our software and running that in a cloud infrastructure today on AWS. Um, so the same interfaces, same plugins, same things will work there with Nutanix clusters that work on Nutanix AHV. No plugin changes there. Um, for Nutanix Xi, it's going to be a, a different story because, like I already said, of the API integration point. So right now, that's only supporting. Uh, virtual apps and desktops AHV plugins. So you can do MCS, you can do power management, um, and you can do um, 
full clones using the MCS wizard as well. That's going to be the initial uh, release. So stay tuned for others to follow. Um, so I got a good question here. I'm going to stop there because we're talking about integration and Benjamin Ben Carrill has a good question here about uh, natively and CVAD. Um, that's a good question. I don't have an answer for you. Um, I do though have a discussion topic for you on that. Um, this is my personal belief or my personal feeling and my thoughts to that question. This is not Nutanix, this is a jarring speaking. Um, when I talk about the plugins going forward um, and what needs to be installed where, um, when it comes to Citrus Cloud, I would like to see it natively integrated. Um, that way you don't have to worry about it. Um, and when I talk about the installed locations of that for Citrus Cloud, that will make sense then. Um, when it comes to on-prem, I'm mixed on that thought. Um, I'm mixed because we can, with us having the plugin out of band, we can release uh, updates and fixes and, and so forth out of band of the virtual apps and desktops releases. Now, since you know current release and cloud are pretty much three months or faster, um, that shouldn't be a big deal. Um, but my thought is for some of the LTSR customers. So that's an interesting question. Um, and it's something that I'll take internally as well. But right now, I don't have a clear answer for that one. But thanks for the question on that one. Um, so provisioning. So when I talk about plugins, um, for AHP and clusters, they're both the same. You can do full clones using the MCS, do power management for full clones if you're not using the MCS wizard to do it. Machine creation services, provisioning. And then for Xi, it's going to be, again, the different plugin type, um, different interface. And the initial release is going to be for full clones, power management, um, and machine creation services. So that's where those provisioning points are at today. Um, and again, stay tuned for more updates uh, around that as um, things progress with uh, Citrix on Xi. Let me double check any more questions here real quick. So we're good there. So um, if you're new to Nutanix, and um, I know some of the call might not be new, but um, I'll talk about app learning too for the question. So app learning is supported on AHV. Um, like I mentioned, it's going to be interfaced into prison elements and I have a section on app learning and talk about that as well. Um, but for those that are new to Nutanix, um, you know, one of our features is shadow clones functionality. And some of you guys have heard this before. I'm just gonna give a quick um, overview of that since we have some new um, callers on the webinar, new attendees on the webinar is that um, machine creation services with local storage, basically you're gonna have a storage location per uh, node with a local storage. And you're gonna have to basically do a master image copy to every node and you'll see multiple connections in the hypervisor for that storage. Um, what it's got to do is basically you're doing a lot of copy in that way. Um, basically you're doing a full copy to every local storage location that is not distributed and so forth. So that's the thing there, MCS with services and local storage. Um, MCS with unoptimized distributed storage. So what I mean by unoptimized is that maybe it doesn't have shadow clones, it doesn't have data locality. What it has is instead of seeing each individual host storage, it has a shared storage across them, but it's not optimized. Um, and what that can do is basically, you'll see the single storage location, it will distribute out, distribute out those um, clones for MCS, but that master is gonna be on one node on one storage. So you're gonna see a lot of network traffic and you could possibly see a hotspot on the storage and possibly uh, a performance issue depending on the architecture. Um, what's different there is with the uh, shadow clones, and it takes the best of local storage and the best of distributed storage, but it's optimized. So what it happens is, is that all reads and writes uh, for MCS um, are all local to the node. So basically what happens is a copy of the master disk is on each node. So it's not going across the network. It's not creating a hotspot. Um, it's not doing a lot of reads necessarily on one node in that cluster. So basically, like I said, all reads and writes are coming from the local node where the VM is running on, and that's the beauty with Shadow Clones. And with customers that we have running uh, Shadow Clones, um, it helps them scale very well. Um, some of my team and counterparts will say that it makes MCS shine, which I agree with. And before coming to Nutanix, I thought the same way as well um, when deploying MCS on uh, Nutanix. Um, so image management. 
Um, the next section we'll talk about is image management, but I'm going to have another poll. And so on this poll, the first one I'm going to ask is this fun question. I just want to see what the split is out there of the audience. So what is your provisioning mechanism? Are you MCS? Are you PVS? Are you both? Um, again, not getting debate. I just want to see what the attendees are um, for this. And so far, it's pretty even, a little more PVS, but it's kind of mainly a split between all three options. And I got a comment here in the chat window on PVS, but moving to MCS, which we do see some customers do once they come to Nutanix, is they change from um, MCS to, to, to PV, or from PVS to MCS once they get on our architecture. Uh, I'm going to give a couple more seconds here, um, and then, which is a good point. Um, you're missing, you know, full uh, duplicates is a good one too as well, uh, which some customers do. Well, they'll, they'll do full clone copies and they'll do sys prepper um, use that way instead of using the built-in mechanism. So um, that's one I don't, I don't see as much anymore. You see a lot of that, but that's one I don't see as much anymore. But that's a good thing about um, putting that one in the poll. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and um basically what we have here is kind of almost an equal split a little more pvs some both but it's kind of basically in thirds um so that's what we're seeing with that poll there for image management so good feedback there uh i'm gonna go ahead and hide that and i'm gonna do one more poll for the next one and i'm gonna launch it so this one is full clones is anyone doing full clones out there? Whether it's full clones via MCS or full clones via the manual method, I'm just wanted to see the gauge of the audience here. I know I'm not supposed to vote, Jarian, but we do have um, some full clones via MCS in the current environment I'm working on. Yeah, I think the point is too, where they've done full clones, the manual method, or they've done the full clones copy um, using the MCS wizard. So um, I'm not going to be shocked to see um, a good chunk of people doing full clones. But good responses. Looks like the majority is going to be almost a 60-40 split of no to yes um, on doing full clones versus not doing full clones. So once I get to about 70%, I'll see about shutting it down or a minute to see um, we're about about 68% in a minute, so I'm going to go ahead and close it down for now. And then I will share the poll real quick. And so in the end, it kind of evened out there, but you know, I'm not shocked to see more saying no than yes on, on full clones. So let's kind of um, hide the poll and then let's get into image management. So uh, machine creation services, um, one of the things here um, about machine creation services and get asked a lot is, you know, how do you maintain that master image, right? So, you know, you have multiple clusters, multiple sites, production, DR, site A, site B, et cetera. How are you maintaining that uh, MCS master image and deploying that around? So first thing, let's discuss the plugin, right? So I get this question a lot um, is where do you install the plugin? So if you're doing on-prem, so your control plane for Citrix is all on-prem in your data center, you're running it on cloud, but not using the cloud control plane for Citrix Cloud, you want to put that in all delivery controllers in the zone, in the same zone. Um, if you're using Citrix Cloud to where your cloud control plane is being hosted by them and managed by them, you want to put that on all um, cloud connectors in the tenant slash site, not just the zone, but all of them. Um, for that. Um, and that's where that question that Ben asked earlier, which is a great question about having that built in, which I think could help solve that that chicken and egg problem if you're using Switch Cloud, about having um, to install the plugin on all cloud connectors, whether you're running Nutanix in that uh, resource location or not. Um, distribution, you know, the, the tried and true method is going to be protection domains. Um, we have some a demo here coming up for that too as well. Um, but the main thing with the protection domain um, is going to basically, you're going to only replicate that master image around um, to your clusters, you know, your sites and so forth. Um, one thing to do uh, is that with um, Nutanix, when you do the protection domain, 
there's differences between the snapshots. So when you make a protection domain and you add your site and you replicate that, there's a snapshot that gets replicated over from cluster A to cluster B. Um, that snapshot is a cerebral-based snapshot and it can't be used with MCS. So what happens is once you move that uh, around to another cluster, another location, you're gonna restore that to a VM and then take a snapshot. And then you have a VM level snapshot, which MCS will use. Now, there are other customers too um, that, you know, that you can use, um, that use automation as well instead of protection domains. Um, they kind of do, you know, desktops um, as code or desktops, you know, kind of automated that way. And that's fine as well. Um, but if you're using the built-in stuff, it's um, the, the tried and true method is definitely protection domains. And again, um, set up your protection domain, restore the snapshot to a VM, take a VM little snapshot and then roll out um, your MCS catalog um, on that cluster. Um, so that, that's the piece there. Now, when it comes to full clones, again, the plugin is gonna be the exact same thing I just explained with MCS. Um, and you're asking me, why do you want the plugin for full clones? Well, two, two things. One is power management. Um, if you want hypervisor integration with power management, you want the plugins installed. Um, two is if you're using the MCS wizard to do full clones, again, you need the plugin. Um, and then the main thing here with distribution is gonna be, instead of just doing the master image, you are going to be doing every uh, full clone VM that you wanna do. So you can use protection domains, which are you know, prism element based, which is a tried and true method. Um, we do have run books, um, which are Prism Central based, um, where you can actually do um, a full failover, um, have them boot IP stuff, extend the network and so forth, which I'll talk about later um, as some of the DR and cloud options. Um, so that's full clones. Um, now we'll get the provisioning. Um, so this one, um, provisioning, we fully support that, um, but you're gonna have to have the plugins installed. Um, and the same plugin logic applies I talked about in the previous two slides. Um, what I mean by that is, is that we have a PVS plugin and basically that PVS plugin gives you the virtual desktops wizard in PVS. Now we don't do the streaming wizard. So if you wanna work outside the plugin, you can still script it. You can use the APIs, you can script it, the, the command lengths. We have some um, NTCs that have done it, Nutanix technical champions that have done it out there. Uh, I know my counterpart manager case has a blog on it too as well. So you can script it outside of the plugin if you want to, but the way our plugin works is that it talks to um, the hypervisor connection on the controllers to get the information for the storage, what to do and so forth. Um, what happens is, is our template for PVS is basically a snapshot. So what you do is you get your, your, your VM ready that you're gonna use to deploy all your PVS clones with, and then you take a snapshot. That snapshot is then used to deploy the PVS targets using our wizard. But again, it's only the um, virtual desktops wizard. It's not the streaming wizard. Um, another thing too is that I get this question all the time is about what does the plugin actually work with? And what I mean by is in the plugin, you see the pixie option, but people ask me, what about BDM ISO? What about BDM partition? Um, what I'll tell you is this, is that the plugin will honor what the template slash snapshot is set to do. So if you have multiple disks, if you have BDM set up, it will honor that. Now, there's a caveat to that <clears throat> is if the BDM has an issue booting to anything, it will fill back to Pixie boot because that's like the native functionality of the plugin for PBS is Pixie boot. But you can use BDM with it. Um, I get this question a lot. It does work. It just fills back to Pixie if there's a problem. Um, as far as your master image, um, you know, there's different ways of getting that VDisk around, but it's going to be at the application level. So VDisk replicator, RoboCopy, um, your own scripting, you know, however you want to re re replicate that around to different clusters out there uh, or different PVS instances, that's what you can do. Um, I'm an old school PVS guy, so I used to use local storage and roll with that. Um, since SMB 3.x and all that kind of stuff, I've, you know, gone more to using some kind of file server, you know, some kind of highly availability, highly available file server um, to have my PVS Vita store instead of having to maintain those copies across PVS servers in the same site location, whatever. Um, you do get one terabyte of files free with AOS. So you can use files and you can use attributed shares and you kind of have your high availability built into there. 
but you're still going to want to replicate those around to active active type locations using some kind of application level scripting, RoboCopy, VDIS replicator, your PVS scripting, whatever you want to use. Um, so that's with PVS. Um, again, you know, that's a lot easier because again, it's application level instead of kind of getting down to high browser level. Um, there's things that we're trying to work through to help to make MCS even better with that workflow, but that's all I'm gonna say for that now. So a uh, quick poll real quick is app layering. So let me go ahead and launch this poll. Are you using app layering? And these folks are coming in the fastest for this one. So it's about a 75-25 split of no winning. This was the fastest vote so far. And I'll give it a few more seconds here and then I'll close it since this one's pretty much a landslide. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that and then share the results of that one. So it's pretty much what I expected. It's about a, um, you know, pretty much 73, 27, you know, three quarters to one quarter split, uh, which I'm not surprised about. Um, but we do support app layering. Um, for the plugins for your provisioning method, MCS, PPS, the same rules apply as the previous uh, slides that we talked about for the plugins wise. Um, for app layering, um, a couple of things when you're using app layering with, um, with AHV. One is make sure you do the file system whitelist for the Elm appliance at the cluster level. Um, that's a question that comes by, I see a lot. Um, two, you can use files for the Elm shares, but for the main Elm share on the appliance, make sure you point that to a general share. Um, if you're going to do user layers or elastic layers, those can be on distributed shares and you can move those and repoint the clients using the registry key, using group policy preferences, you know, GPOs, et cetera, to repoint those based on location. Um, another thing too, when it comes to user layers versus elastic layers is that elastic or read-only, they can be copied anytime pretty easily. When it comes to user layers, you're gonna need some kind of storage level replication, um, or you're going to have, um, wait until some kind of down peer to replicate those because those are read write um, I wanna take this question because I have a good question that came in was about Prism Central and app layering. Um, actually, let me, oops, hold on, let me hide the slide or hide the poll, sorry about that, so you can see the slide. Um, the integration point, like I talked about earlier with app layering is gonna to talk to Prism Element. Um, so that's gonna be on a per cluster level. So Prism Central is not there yet. You're still gonna be using Prism Element for that integration with app layering. Um, as far as distribution, a couple of things come to mind with um, with app layering um, is that you can use protection domains. Um, the main thing we're using protection domains like before for your master image, if you're doing MCS, um, is that when you export that um, layered image, if the OSID changes, it will cause a problem with user layers. So if you're using user layers, you wanna replicate that image around using some kind of replication like protection domains. Um, if you're not using user layers, um, you can have, you know, say they're in the same location, like multiple clusters in the same location, same data center, or a really good link between data centers. You can use a single M appliance and have multiple hypervisor connectors. Um, again, you can use files for this. Um, you, you get a terabyte free, good use case for it. Um, and if you change this to, to files, there's the connectors. Um, so use the connectors for that, for the M connectors and have those go to multiple clusters using the connectors, whether they're MCS ones for AHV or just the AHV connectors for um, app layering. Um, one more thing too, I forgot to mention when we're talking about using files with user layers is Citrix will put an extra like users folder underneath the path for user layers. So they don't always distribute properly when using distributed shares for files. Um, something that we're still trying to, to work on to help hopefully address that at some point, but stay tuned for that. Um, so that's app layering and provisioning. And then let's get the, let's get the slide here. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, app layering and provisioning is gonna be the same thing as MCS. Um, plugins are still the same, PBS plugins are still the same. The same rules apply with, um, with the Elm appliance and the file shares. 
um, distribution that still applies as well. Um, Elm connectors, the same thing with um, user layers, making sure that the OSID doesn't change if you're doing it, you know, different uh, types of replication for that image, but PBS is easy because you're just copying the VDisk around. So there shouldn't be an issue there. Um, as we're talking about these, um, these different things about snapshots. So um, I have a question here about any best practices for managing MCS snapshots on Nutanix. Um, I still wouldn't go too many snapshots for a VM. I still try to stay under five snapshots. Um, and then again, just, just making sure that you know the difference between if you're using protection domains, the difference between the, the protection domain snapshot versus the VM level snapshot um, when you're rolling that out. Um, you're, you know, if you're going to have multiple locations, you're going to want to replicate that around somehow or use uh, automation. Um, one method I like to use, and I've seen others talk about it as well, is that with uh, MCS for roll back and roll forward, I like using rolling catalogs. Um, and what rolling catalogs are is basically I roll a new catalog for every update, um, do a small seed of users on that catalog, have them test it. If it's good, I add those to a delivery group for production, extend the extend the delivery group out to where I need to be, shut down the existing ones, and put them in maintenance mode. Um, that way, if I need to roll back, all I do is basically power them back on, take them out of maintenance mode, power them the other ones off, put them in maintenance mode, find out what the problem was, but they're rolled back pretty quickly instead of doing an MCS rollback. That's just my preference, and that's whether it's Nutanix or not. I like using rolling catalogs as my uh, roll back, roll forward mechanism. So that's a good question about managing snapshots. Okay, so demo time. Um, so here's a nice demo here about using protection domains. And this is gonna be from my counterparts, Finn, who I thought I saw on the call. Um, but um, we're gonna see here that we're gonna have a cluster set up. It's gonna have the plugin installed. We have a desktop, we have a catalog, we have a delivery group, we have a connection for that cluster. Um, we're gonna go ahead and show the cluster working, you know, by launching a desktop, no issues there. Um, but we're gonna show how fast it is to replicate an image and stand up another cluster and roll out 600 desktops with just over an hour of time. Um, so when you go here, just log into the Windows 10 demo machine just to show you that, hey, here's the existing one on cluster one, showing that it works, showing there's no problems. Um, and then we're going to <clears throat> log out and then go through and deploy uh, another Nutanix cluster um, from scratch using the installer. Um, you see the time starts there. So this video was sped up a little bit, but it's gonna show you that you can pretty much deploy another cluster, do a protection domain that, of that uh, master image and get 600 desktops deployed in about just over an hour. Um, so we're going through here and putting in the information to deploy the other cluster, another four node cluster. Our information here are, you know, our time zone, NTP, DNS, um, the RAM for the CVMs and so forth. Live riser type, gonna go through, finish the information, and you'll see in about, you know, 15, 10, 15 minutes, we'll have the cluster deployed here um, according to the timer um, in the demo video here. Let me, well, this is deploying, let me check the questions real quick. So we talked about the manual snapshot, about backing that up and moving that around, and that's going to be um, protection domains. Um, if you actually want a full backup of that, we do have some integrations with 10x mine and that kind of stuff to actually fully back up the VMs with Haiku and so forth. So if you want more of a backup solution past snapshot, which I recommend, we do have some integrations out there. Like I said, we have mine, we have Haiku that we integrate with and so forth. Um, you're going to see the cluster has been deployed here, about 10, 15 minutes, I think. Um, and you go through, and we're doing the first time information for the cluster. Bare cluster here, um, just AHB installed. So we're gonna go through and set up our storage container. And we're gonna go through and make sure our, our VMs created for our user VMs. So that's done there. We're gonna go through and set up our remote sites and that way they talk to each other for um, protection domains. So going through here, adding each to each other so they can replicate in between each other. Gonna go ahead, bandwidth throttling, see that in there, not using that. Um, put all the settings in here. Going to the other cluster, doing the same thing.
going through, and now we're going to set our protection domain, give it a name, pick our entities, our master image, give it a name, select that, give it a schedule, you know, one snapshot, repeat every one hour for this, for this purpose of the demo. It's going to go through and click close, and now it's going to go ahead and get that going and then replicate the image over from cluster one to cluster two. Well, that's starting to get kicked off, going to go through, and since we're using the same controller, we're going to add our hypervisor connection to the other cluster, get that taken care of while the image is replicating, pick our network, pick our, you know, all of our different um, things we need to use for that. So I got that ready to go, you know, modify some of the connection settings there. Going to go back and check on our application. Looking at our snapshots, checking our application. Starting to see that get replicated. Going to restore it from that a snapshot because again, it's a different type of snapshot. So we have to restore the VM, go into the VM, and then take a snapshot. So we're going to go and take the snapshot there. And then now we can go into Studio create our catalog based on that connection, based on that replicated image, same one as the cluster one and cluster two, do about 600 VMs, you know, pick our information, ME convention, OU, et cetera. Catalog name, and then boom right there, 600 desktops getting deployed on the other cluster. In our latest ROA, we have about 150 desktops per node, so in a four node cluster, 600 desktops. Going to go through and create the delivery group so we can assign that out to the user's test. It's there. So now we're going to go ahead and log into Storefront and then show you the desktops there. And that's how quick. All right, first, we're going to have actually power management settings. And then now go to Storefront. Log in, launch desktop, and then boom. So just over an hour, deploy another cluster, deploy, replicate the master image, deploy 600 more desktops, and our users are up and running in just an hour. So that's how quick we can do things with, with Nutanix. So that's just uh, an example there of using protection domains to replicate that master image around. Oops. And thank you, Sven, for the demo. That was a demo that Sven gave me here yesterday, so I, I was like, I'm going to add that into here. <clears throat> so thank you, Sven. Um, the next thing we're going to do is talk about cloud disaster recovery. And we have our last poll question. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that poll question. And if you're a Nutanix customer, are, are you looking at using Nutanix um, in the cloud for DR, bursting, or both? Because that's going to be relevant to what we're doing in the next couple slides here. And while that's being voted, I'm gonna take a quick drink of water. Did I miss any questions, James? No, you're doing an absolutely uh, wonderful job of monitoring your own questions. <laughs> All right. As well as something else you're doing. Um, yeah, um, I've been trying to keep them trimmed down for you, but no, we haven't got anything else come in just now. Okay, good. So we're about 45% voted. So I'm gonna give it a few more seconds here. So we can get those votes up a little higher. So um, question about the plugin. So since we don't need a plugin to integrate with ESX, um, we can use our protection stuff like uh, protection domains and other application stuff built into um, Nutanix for ESX, but um, we don't have any plugins needed because ESX is natively um, supported in virtual apps and desktops via vCenter, and that that's natively in the um, natively in the dropdown in Studio. Um, so that's a good question. So we rely on the um, provisioning SDK. I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll and show results while I'm answering this. Um, we rely on the provisioning SDK for now to have a third-party plugin, and so we have to actually install those plugins. Um, as far as like PBS, Power Management, MCS. 
the connection for the API to talk to vCenter are natively built into the controller, so you don't need that. But things like shadow clones, our protection stuff, all those things will also work uh, with ESX if you're on Nutanix as well. So good question there. Thank you for the question. <clears throat> okay, back to the poll. So it looks like we have a majority are looking at using for DR and for uh, cloud bursting. So the both option one there, um, but a lot of DR. So good topic here. Um, so let's go ahead and get back into this. So uh, just a quick overview here, and this kind of goes to the theme of Nutanix and cloud um, is basically protect, replicate, recover. Um, we have more services, but I'm going to focus on VMs and files, mainly VMs. Um, the one thing here that we'll talk about mainly is data protection and disaster recovery. Um, but if you look at our options here, we have public cloud, private cloud, and distributed cloud. So private cloud is going to be Nutanix AHB in your data center. Um, public cloud could be using a cloud provider or using uh, Nutanix clusters on, um, on AWS or using um, our cloud service of Xi for DR as a managed service. Um, and then distributed is going to be, okay, maybe we're going to have some workloads here on our data center um, on Nutanix AHV, uh, maybe use cloud bursting like you guys voted on, DR uh, for cloud, um, dev test environments for cloud as well, but connect those into our existing environment, and that's where the theme of this is going here. Um, so the first thing is um, with uh, 510 Plus, we have what's called integrated one-click disaster recovery orchestration. Um, what this is, is this is going to be a Prism Central functionality. Um, and so you're going to have Prism, L or, I'm sorry, Prism Central or PC manage your clusters. And this is good for a DR, whether it's Nutanix to Nutanix in your data centers or Nutanix to our managed Xi service um, for DR. Um, and what this is going to be is basically you have one location as one availability zone, another location as another availability zone. And what you do is you set up protection rules. Um, and those protection rules, you set up, you know, the protection class applications, given categories, um, protection policies, recovery point objective, recovery time objective, and the snapshot retention. And the recovery plan, which is nice, especially with something like full clones, or if you're just doing DR as a cold site, is that protection plans are going to give you the capability to say, okay, I'm sorry, recovery plans are going to give you the capability to say, I want things to boot up in a certain order. I want them to maintain their IP address info. And... At some point, we'll have a script execution as well um, for when we do a failover, doing additional things with scripting. Um, but for today, one of the things, if you're doing DR um, and you're looking at um, doing like a cold site and so forth and just having these protection rules and recovery plans in is that you can set up um, staging the recovery plan. So if I'm a service customer, for example, I can say, I'm going to do my core infrastructure services first. Databases, maybe Windows file shares, you know, those core infrastructure services as a stage one first. Um, and then as a secondary option, I'm going to do my Citrix infrastructure pieces. Like, for example, I'm going to do my, my delivery controllers, storefronts, my other components like WIM or session recording or PBS and that kind of stuff. And then my next step is going to be, okay, my, once all those are up, my VDAs will come up. The nice thing, too, is that you can put uh, like a delay time in between each of these stages to say, okay, do the core stuff first, make sure that comes up, wait 30 seconds, wait a minute. Do the next phase, uh, wait, you know, 30 seconds, wait a minute, and then bring everything up and then get in. You can also do floating public IPs, too, as well, and network rules, especially if you're doing it to um, our Xi cloud services. That way you can... Um, have public access to services as well also, and then do um, things like VPN also, um, from site to site VPN if you're doing it from different locations. So another good thing here is that you can do test failover in a bubble. So instead of having to actually plan a DR weekend for production, you can actually do testing in an isolated bubble um, that's not uh, writable outside of that to be able to say, okay, my core stuff works. You know, I can do that periodic testing then and then um, basically just get rid of that when I'm done testing it, but not have to take any production downtime, not affect production. So that's what the one-click death recovery is um, for that. Now, um, the next thing we're talking about is um, DR on Xileap. So I talked about our integration points um, and we have a plugin coming soon for this. Um, and so basically, if you're gonna do DR for um, Xileap, um, or using Xileap, um, those recovery plans come into, you know, as a big um, bonus here because we can stage things being booted up 
based on different stages when they come up in over on DR the service in Xyleap. Um, and today we'll do, you know, MCS master images, um, persistent desktops, MCS, other components today that we can fail over to. Um, basically, it's just a click inside of Prism Central to fail over um, or the Xi GUI to fail over and fail back if a DR event happens. Um, right now, like I said, um, the first plugin to be supported and that we're working on to come out is going to be the AHB plugin. Um, and that's going to be for uh, the Prism Central slash um, Prism Central slash um, Xi APIs. Um, and of course, you know, we'll have other plugins to follow, but this is the initial plugin is going to be the Citrix plugin um, to do MCS power management, full clones, et cetera. Um, I see a question here, a scrolling up here is that uh, bubble testing, does this allow users to log on and bubble test for verification? So you can test via the VM console GUIs, or you can also, in an isolated fashion, um, publish that out to like a Netscaler gateway to come in and test that. Um, so it's not talking to your production stuff, but you would need like a separate um, public IP for that and like a, um, a separate DNS name or use some kind of spoof DNS to make sure that you're not uh, impacting your production environment. It's a good question there. Now, um, as far as demo, so let's have a demo of the plugin working. Um, and so here um, I have um, virtual apps and desktops deployed in our in XI cloud services. And so you see here, um, I have a connection and notice the difference here in the connection is that I'm going to my tenant um, address here my username is a different type of username. Basically, I'm using a service account um, for token um, API verification. Um, and you'll see here, this is what the Xi overlay looks like. Um, it's kind of a trimmed down um, Prism Central look and feel. But notice everything is in the overlay here for Xi. I'm not having to go to Prism Elements. Um, one thing to note out here is that my snapshots based on this plugin are using recovery point snapshots. So it does do a restore of the VM as a snapshot and then goes through the MCS process. So we're gonna go through here um, and create a catalog real quick, just showing you that the full integration of our new plugin, which we're still testing, this is the early sneak peek um, of the plugin um, using native PC slash Xi APIs um, instead of the on-prem um, prism element based plugin. So going through, picking the container, going through our snapshots, picking our snapshot here, um, going through, picking our location, naming convention. I think in this demo, I think I had a indecisive naming convention, so I changed it a couple times. Um, but going through, same kind of workflow, it's just that different APIs, different way we're talking to our Nutanix infrastructure in Xi Cloud services. Give it a name, and then going through and doing our image work here. Now, again, since we're using a different APIs and different way of recovering, we're actually restoring the recovery point VM and then taking a snapshot of that and then doing the MCS process. Um, so there's a couple extra steps in this with, with the workflow, but you're seeing here fully integrated um, into our Xi Cloud services. Have machines there. And then going into the UI and we're seeing um, what the UI looks like for the VMs and so forth. And you'll see things like availability zones, protection policies, recovery plans, floating IPs, virtual public clouds, things like network policies, that kind of stuff you can all do. Um, your images, or your image service, ISOs, images and so forth, and your VMs all here inside what the Xi overlay looks like. Um, there is some conversation looks like going on in the chat, it looks like it's more profiles. So I don't think there's anything I need to. Yeah, Jared, and sorry, I'm just asking if it's on if it's on Nutanix, whether it's relevant or not. If not, we can we can take it offline uh, and discuss it there. So um, I think... go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say. I mean, you, you're welcome to to chip in if you want. I just know it's quite a big subject, really. Yeah. So um, we could take files since we're getting a lot of files questions. Um, we could take files as a complete separate webinar, honestly. And there's some things that we're working on to improve files and some gotchas when using things like FS logics and so forth. I mentioned the app layering gotcha about distributed and possibly not distributing properly because of the extra folder. Um, so we can probably do another follow-up webinar since we're seeing a lot of chat in here about files. We can probably do a whole webinar just on files in Citrix. Um, for profile management, I'll... folder direction, FS logics, user layers, the whole, the whole nine yards. 
Yeah, that would that would be great one, I think, because I see a lot of customers at the minute that are discussing about profiles, whether it be in the cloud uh, and things like that, and, and resilience and sort of replication and high availability is a very big topic in there. So I think that would be that would be definitely one for, for a future webinar. Okay, so since we're getting close to the hour and I'm almost done here um, with time, um, we're going to take files as the next follow webinar. And so I'll work with Stephanie and the CGC team on getting that scheduled. Um, because we, like I said, we can go into a whole webinar on files um, with the different options and discussing that. Um, so the next option for cloud is going to be Citrix on Nutanix clusters. So what this is basically, instead of having the hardware in your data center um, managing the hardware, um, what you're doing is managing the software basically. Um, so we can take what you have on prem Nutanix AHB and extend that to public cloud, and that's what Nutanix clusters is. Um, so right now today, that's an AWS. Um, basically, you're going to have the same look and feel same options um, as what you have with the PE plugins today. Um, this is going to be the same, like I said, same look and feel as AHV on-prem. Um, you know, it's about app learning storage too for files also, so that can be brought up too as well. So I'm, I'm going to take some notes here from the comments. Um, but same look and feel, same PE interface. You can use Prism Central. All the plugins today that integrate PE integrate the same way um, with um, uh, Nutanix clusters on AWS. Um, and again, you know, things like bursting, DR, dev test, seasonal, you know, whatever you want to use it for, um, that's what you're going to do today with Nutanix clusters, um, formerly known as Xi clusters. Um, this is going to be on AWS bare metal i3 instances. Um, and we'll go ahead and do a demo of that as well. So I'm going to do a demo of this. Um, and if anyone saw the keynote from Copenhagen, um, Nicola briefly went through this with the the demo of uh, the multi-cluster manager and Citrix and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to show this today. So what we have here in this demo, the last demo of the day, um, we're going to show Citrix on Nutanix clusters um, on AWS. So this is our portal for a multi-cluster manager. Um, and you see I have a couple of clusters in here. I'm going to do the baking show demo here with this. I'm going to show you the workflow of deploying a cluster. And then we're going to go do a demo on a live cluster real quick. So in here, this is the portal. So you see we have two clusters deployed. But I'm going to go ahead and add a cluster. When you add a cluster, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you tell it the name, the URL you want to use, the cloud provider, which today is AWS only. You look at the, um, the region. So we have some region listed there. And then you look at the availability, which is nice, because you can go out and see, OK, which regions do I want to deploy in, and which regions do I want to stay away from, because they're maybe being over um, subscribed right now. Um, then I can put in my, my VPC for my client network. Um, which region in that, I'm sorry, which uh, availability zone in that region, and then make the network for the user VMs as well. So the initial VLAN. The AOS version, which is 510 today, the instance type, which is I3 metal, um, number of nodes in this example, one node, our, ASS, our SSH keys for the CVMs. We can also limit Prism element access, whether it's open to the public, certain IP addresses, or not um, publicly accessible at all. Um, we can also say, hey, um, I want to schedule this. Maybe I'm just testing this and doing some testing and I forget about it and I want it to be able to destroy itself later on after a certain date. We can do that as well. That way I'm not incurring excessive AWS fees to my company if I'm doing things like this and testing it and I forget to, to destroy it. So that's the workflow for deploying a cluster. Now I'm going to go into my existing cluster, which is on Northern Region of Virginia, US East 1. Um, and notice here the name of the cluster, it's ready. Or information to connect, but also look at the top, there's a hibernate option, which I'll talk about later as well. Um, it's going through here, looking at it, and then now the next thing I'm going to do is you'll see look and feel, prism element, one node cluster, just like on prem, same look and feel, same workflows as you would do with uh, on prem, the 10x HV as well. Um, I'm going to go in here and look at uh, my VM list. Just did a quick demo on here on my VM list, and I showed. Basically, I have a, a domain controller, a VPX, a NetScaler, a application delivery controller, delivery controller, and my MCS master and two images. I bring up the gateway with workspace theme. I'm going to go ahead and log in, launch a desktop. And basically, this is pretty much a quick, dirty demo on using Nutanix clusters for Citrix. And there's some more stuff that we're working on, too, um, as well. Launch my Windows 10 desktop. Going to get right in. Um, through the, the gateway VPX, and basically that's the, the demo of, you know, like I said, same look and feel, same plugins as on-prem, 
um, up and running pretty quickly using the MCM or the multi-cluster manager um, for Zyde clusters. And then once you're going to log out everything real quick, and then like I talked about, you know, incurring excessive fees for AWS, um, well, since I'm done right now, I'm not going to destroy this cluster, but I'm going to log out and then I'm going to go through and hibernate the cluster. That way it's still there where I need to bring things up, but I'm not incurring excessive fees on AWS. So I'm not using it. I hibernate the, I hibernate the cluster and then it's good to go. So that's the demo um, right there for using Citrix on Xi clusters, using the multi-cluster manager to deploy those very quickly into AWS, my region of choice, my availability of choice, you know, and then being able to hibernate that. And then later on, when you do some more work on it or, or do the demo, basically I wake it up, come back, and it's woken up, my VMs are there, I can start rocking and rolling with Citrix on um, TNX clusters. You can also connect back into your on-prem site, you know, do things like protection domains, use the, the recovery plans we talked about, all that same features and functionality are there. You can use files on it. Um, all those things are there uh, and so forth with that. Um, so I'm at the end here. I'm a few minutes over. Sorry about that, but we have some good questions and I always like interactions. So I'd rather be over and have interaction than be under have none. Um, additional resources here. Um, like I said, the team I work with, we do the RAs for EUC and Nutanix. Um, we just updated the virtual desktops RA um, for AHV. Um, currently working on some other ones right now to get those out there as well. Um, those are out there. Um, just recently did a best practices guide for um, GPUs on Nutanix. So if your GPU is out there, that was updated with the T4 stuff. Go look for that out there. Um, different things on the website. Um, if you want to try out Nutanix, or you're you know you're just getting into it, you can go and download the Community Edition. It's AHV run on commodity hardware. Use the same PE plugins I talked about. You know with the Prism Element plugins for AHV PVS. You know all of those same things. Use files on it and so forth. You can download that on commodity hardware, do a lot of the testing um, that we talked about. Um, data protection, disaster recovery, a link for that, disaster recovery, uh, clusters on AWS. And then kind of one more thing is that, um, you know, in 5.11, we released like uh, image management improvements to basically with uh, using Prism Central to set up policies to basically replicate your images around. So anything in the image service, ISOs, disk, maybe you converted a VM to, uh, uh, to the image service via the CLI, and you want to replicate that around. One thing I'm testing and playing with uh, as far as another option for moving your master images around is basically seeing converting that to uh, an image and using the image management improvements to automatically replicate that around um, to my different environments as well for an option, especially if they're under the same PC and the same data center and, and so forth. Um, with that, any questions? Um, I think I don't know whether the only one that you might have missed is there was a question about how is one-click DR orchestration licensed? Apologies if I uh, if yeah, you did so answer I, that. Yeah, so there's an add-on option for that, and I believe it's in the the highest option. I'm an engineer; I don't really get into the sales side. I, I'll double check the licensing, but I know there's it's an add-on option, and I think it's in the ultimate option. Um, if you're going to use one-click DR to Zai, that's a subscription and that's a managed service. So the biggest thing between Zai and Zai clusters. Um, or sorry, Nutanix cluster is a new name, is that Xi is a managed service. Um, so basically you're in the GUI managing your VMs. Everything underneath is managed by us. It's our cloud. Um, Nutanix clusters, um, that's going to be managed by you on AWS, but the same look and feel as Nutanix HV on-prem. Um, like I said, it's, I, I have to double check this and I'll follow up with it, but it's going to be an add-on option or it's an ultimate, but I need to double check that. Um, that that's a good thing. Um, as far as um, James, or some, sorry, Salim had a question about: Is this on cloud or on-prem also available? Which part? The leap functionality. Yes, the so one-click DR. So yes, good question. So one-click DR or the leap functionality. Um, Zy leap is from on-prem to to our Zy managed service. Leap functionality, which I call it, is basically um, Nutanix to Nutanix. So that can be an HV, HV on-prem. That can be AHV on-prem to uh, Nutanix clusters and so forth. As long as Nutanix and Nutanix, it's fine. Um, it's not just uh, just cloud. It can be on-prem or cloud, or it can cross both of them. It's a good question. I think we've managed to cover 
all the other questions off as we went, which is uh, excellent. <laughs> so everything <laughs> seems to have, have been covered off. That's really, really good. So um, I think we've uh, we've reached a, a natural end there with uh, responding to what everybody's got. Yeah, thank you again, uh, James, for moderating. Thank you, Steffi, for having me. Um, I think for our next webinar, we can start playing for files. Um, seems like that's the hot topic, and um, there's some things going on that I'm working with that as well. So that'll be a good time to, to go through those in, in a file webinar for, for Citrix. All right, that sounds awesome to me, thanks. Um, just a couple of closing notes then for everyone. Um, thank you, Darian, thank you, James. Appreciate both of you being here today. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, just a reminder that if you opted in for a chance to win the $100 Amazon gift card, your, uh, the winner will be chosen offline at random and we will notify you. Um, we'll also post the winner on Twitter, so keep an eye out on Twitter, follow us at MyCUGC, and we'll make that announcement as soon as we find out who the winner is. Um, and finally, if you have not been out to MyCUGC.org, we urge you to check it out. If you're not a member of your local group, um, we have so many chapters all around the world. Um, so go find your local group, find your next meeting, get plugged in. Um, we have discussion forums, you can ask questions. Maybe you can answer questions for people. Um, you can go to your local meetings. We have our day-long Excel events and uh, webinars, and you can also look through our library of recorded webinars. And then we also have regular blog posts from industry experts from the CTA and CTP communities and other people as well. So lots of resources for you out on our website, and we hope you'll check it out. Um, I think that, uh, Jarian, what I'll do is I'll get you the full list of questions after after the webinar, and that way if there's anything we did miss, um, we can address it and make sure, you know, we get that. Um, we can either create a forum post or I can find out who asked it and we can, we can get the information out that way. Um, and I did put a link in the chat window for everyone to our survey. Again, it's short, anonymous, super quick. And um, you'll receive that again in an email tomorrow if you don't have time today. You'll also get a link to the previous webinar, uh, part one. If you haven't watched that yet, you'll get a link to that. And then you'll get a link to today's recording as well. All right. Thanks, everyone. I hope you all have a great uh, rest of your day or evening, wherever you are in the world, and an awesome uh, start to 2020. Thanks for starting out the year with us, Darian and James. Thank no you. Problem. Thank you very much. All right, everyone. We'll see you on the next webinar. Have a great day. Bye. Cheers.